In this lesson, you're going to learn about the NPM repository and how to access its packages to build your applications more quickly. So one of the incredible things about Node.js is the sheer volume of packages that are available to download free of charge to use in your own projects. And these comprise of modules or a series of modules bundled together into a package, which can be fairly low level things like dealing with the computer's hardware, or just building on the existing node functionality, solving such problems as user authentication or handling HTTP requests so that you don't have to approach these problems and write code from scratch. So at first it can feel like you're building your programs with Lego bricks provided by other users, but if someone's already solved a problem and solved it well by publishing a package, and you may as well save yourself some time and utilize that package in your project. So all of these packages are held in the NPM repository, and if you head on over to the website, you can literally just go and search for packages here. For example, there are popular frameworks like Express.js, which as you can see, provides us with a full web framework. And there's also other packages like SQLize, which will enable you to connect to different database systems. and even packages for accessing the hardware of a Raspberry Pi. So if we visit the page for one of these packages, you'll see there'll be information about how to use the particular package and usually a synopsis of what it actually does. So in order to install and use these packages, you need to utilize a command line tool, which is simply called npm. So back in Visual Studio Code, if we go to our terminal, you can verify that you have the npm tool installed just by simply typing npm-v for its version. And if you get any other response, then npm probably hasn't been installed correctly. And luckily npm is bundled when you install Node.js, so you don't need to worry about downloading it separately. But if you do get an error trying to access the npm version, chances are you might need to reinstall Node. So how do we actually install programs with npm? Well, there are two ways. We can install a package globally so that you can run it no matter where you are in your terminal. You don't need to be in a specific folder for the package to be found. Or you can install a package locally to a project that you're working with. And we'll cover the second step in the next video, but for now, we're going to install a package globally. And the package we're going to install is called Nodemon, which extends a core feature of the file system module, which is to watch files for changes. So we install it by saying npm install dash g for global and type in the name of our package which is nodemon and if we hit enter now you can see we get some information about some packages that are needed to be downloaded to install nodemon so these are actually dependencies that are required to install nodemon itself and if we let that run through When it finishes, you can see we get a message saying that how many packages have been added and the time it took to install. So you might be thinking, well, I only wanted to install one package, the Nodemon package. How come I've installed 223 packages? And that's because the Nodemon package itself consists of other dependencies that you saw being installed when the installation was progressing. And we'll talk a little bit about dependencies in the next lesson. But for now, you'll see that you have a new program installed called Nodemon. And as we did with npm, if we type in nodemon-v, we can see the version of nodemon that we have installed. So let's create a quick file just to test this out. So the way we've been running node programs so far is just to type node and then the name of the program. And you can see the program runs once and then we return to the terminal. But if we repeat that process with nodemon, you can see we get some additional output letting us know that Nodemon is running and then we finally get our output towards the bottom. And more importantly, we haven't been returned to the terminal because Nodemon is waiting for changes. So if we go in and change our file, when we save it, Nodemon automatically recognizes that the file has changed and runs the code again. So Nodemon's really useful when you have a large project and you want to watch all your files for changes, enabling you to swiftly make changes and see the results of them. But this was just really an example of how you can access the npm repository from the terminal, install a new program, and then start using it straight away in your projects. Of course, it doesn't need to be the Nodemon package that you install globally. Anything that's available on the npm repository, you can install in the same way. And you'll soon build up a list of favorite programs that you want to install to help your development work. 
So when you're ready, let's move on to the next lesson, which is looking at setting up projects, installing their dependencies, and the package.json file.